We're not even looking at hospitalizations really because those are staying relatively the same. Instead, we're focusing primarily on cases and this is why we call it a case-demic. But one question needs to be answered. How do we calculate cases? How do we determine cases? And since most people are too lazy to look up on their own exactly how PCR tests work, I've decided to explain it in a video for you. So I'm just summarizing it, but keep in mind, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a virologist, I'm not an epidemiologist. I only took chemistry and biology in high school. I studied economics in school and I'm just a meathead who likes to lift weights. So take everything I say with a grain of salt, look it up on your own if you have any questions. Don't just rely on this video, okay? Use your own friggin' brain. Lucky for you and me, the internet is loaded with information. Ignorance really is a choice. Well, until censorship takes away that choice and leaves you ignorant. So what is a PCR test? Let's read it out. Sometimes called molecular photocopying, the polymerase chain reaction test is a fast and inexpensive technique used to amplify, copy, small segments of DNA. Because significant amounts of a sample of DNA are necessary for molecular and genetic analysis, studies of isolated pieces of DNA are nearly impossible without PCR amplification. Often heralded as one of the most important scientific advances in molecular biology, PCR revolutionized the study of DNA to such an extent that its creator, Kerry B. Mullis, was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1993. So how does the PCR test work? To amplify a segment of DNA using PCR, the sample is first heated so the DNA denatures or separates into two pieces of single-stranded DNA. Next, an enzyme called TAC polymerase synthesizes, builds, two new strands of DNA using the original strands as templates. This process results in the duplication of the original DNA with each of the new molecules containing one old and one new strand of DNA. Then each of these strands can be used to create two new copies and so on and so on. It is important to note that the detecting of viral material by PCR does not indicate that the virus is fully intact and infectious, i.e able to cause infection in other people. Say it again, a positive PCR test does not mean that the person has an infection. It means they might have an infection. In January 2020, a virologist, Mr. Drustin out of Germany, he took the old strands of SARS coronavirus and he put it into a PCR test and then he sent it off to China and then they took that with some people who were positive for coronavirus and then they tested positive on his PCR test and thus, that PCR test is what became the standard. So the standard PTR test is based off of old SARS coronaviruses. Some important, important points, July 13th, 2020, page 38 of a publication on PCR tests on the CDC. Detection of viral RNA may not indicate the presence of infectious virus or that 2019 NCOV is causative agent for clinical symptoms. The performance of this test has not been established for monitoring treatment of NCOV infection. This test cannot rule out diseases caused by other bacterial or viral pathogens. It is still not clear whether there has ever been a scientific isolation of the Wuhan virus, so no one really knows exactly what we are looking for. And if it is anything like influenza, then there's a good chance that it is mutating. So let's look at this to make it really simple. So. Cycle threshold, that's the amount of times that it photocopies, okay? So you have your original, you have your original DNA sequence, okay? Heats it up, splits it up, times two. So that's the number of cycles, one cycle, so that's two, it doubles it. And then what you do is it's gonna double it again. So it's like saying one times two is two, and then times two is four. And then you double it again, so you get eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, you get the freaking point. Study May 2020, predicting infectious SARS-CoV-2 from diagnostic samples. What they found for cycle thresholds, the amount of time that it photocopies, was that 24 or less had 97% specificity for infectious viral material. So let's take a look at what 24 cycles looks like. 24 cycle threshold is 16,777,216 copies. To err on the side of caution, some doctors will say to go to 30 cycle threshold, which is 1,073,742,000 copies. 33 cycle threshold some places are doing. That is 8,589,935,000. Most places are using around 37 cycle threshold. That is 137,439,000,000 copies. In Ontario, 
38 to 45 cycle threshold. Let's look at this number. 274,877,000,000 copies. 45 CT. 35 trillion. 184 billion 370 million copies. Now let's compare that to 24 cycles. 24 cycles, 16 million, 35 trillion. How many times does this go into that? Okay, so we are looking a little bit more sensitive than we need to be. And we have to recognize that there's a difference between having some viral material and having the infectious virus in you. There's a difference between having some of this genetic material, which is from the old SARS coronavirus. So it could be a common cold. It could be the flu. There's a difference between having some of that material in you, which is amplified to the trillions versus having enough of it to be infected and to infect other people. Big difference. So Randy Hillier decided to bring this up in our assembly and he asks the premier, our COVID policies and the risk that they pose requires an honest and forthright discussion. Dr. Yeadon, a former chief scientist with the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer has stated, and I quote, most if not all of the PCR tests result in false positives due to high CT thresholds. Juliette Morrison, a virologist at the University of California states, and I quote, any test with a cycle threshold above 35 is far too sensitive. The Public Health Agency of Canada reported in May of this year that testing over 25 cycles provides dubious results. The prestigious Oxford professor, Dr. Carl Hennigan, has stated a PCR test does not equal COVID-19. Speaker, my question to the Premier, is your testing creating both a false understanding of the risk as well as false positives? This is what the Premier responds. Thank you, Speaker. The PCR testing is very effective in areas where there are outbreaks. It has proven to be so. We are, we are receiving that information. We need that information in order to take action. We have taken action on several fronts in terms of limiting social and monitored social gatherings, limiting capacities in restaurants and bars and in other actions that we've taken. But I'm not quite sure what the member is suggesting. Are you suggesting we don't do any testing? We don't. We just stop testing. Is that the reaction that we should be taking with this? What else would you suggest? Wow, she really answered that like a politician. I mean, she answered it very well for a politician. And what I mean by that is she used some circular reasoning. She didn't really answer the question and then she threw back some straw man at him. So first, what he's saying is, isn't there a problem that we're running our policies based off of a test that gives a lot of false positives, that it has a tendency to give far too many pos positives positive results? And then she says, well, the test is accurate when we are testing in areas with outbreaks. So the, the circular reasoning here, the test that tests positive is accurate when we are testing people who are positive. What? And then what she, she, she suggests is she just totally goes to the other extreme and throws it back at him. Oh, should we just stop testing altogether? Obviously not. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, why are we running our policies off of this when it's said that 25 CT is where it should be and we are using 38 to 45? Obviously, we're going to, we're testing at a sensitivity far higher than what we need. And then we're going to think more people have cases and then, oh, it's a case demic. All these people are scared and we're fear mongering. That's what he's saying. And then Randy Hillier responds again. Okay. I'm glad you asked that question. On July 30th, the Deputy Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Barbara Yaffe, stated, and I quote, our testing can result in over 50% false positives. That is, the person actually doesn't have COVID. They have something else, or they have, they have nothing, okay? She has also called for the limits on testing of asymptomatic people, while the government calls for more. Another contradiction in a long list of COVID contradictions. We know that high false positive rates are due to high cycle thresholds and Canadian and world experts agree it should not be more than 25 cycles. Yet according to the journal Virology, Ontario labs are testing samples at 38 to 45 cycles. That what needs to be done? Speaker to the Premier, when did the Premier become aware of these faulty tests and practices and why have you done nothing to fix them since at least July? Then she responds, we say to the member, there are zero inconsistencies coming from our public health experts. And then Hillier yells out 25. And he's yelling out 25 because he's referring to the 25 cycle threshold recommendation given by the Public Health Agency of Canada, of the country. She's saying there's no inconsistencies. He's pointing out the Public Health Agency of the country just said it. 
And then she goes on to say, Dr. Yaff has clarified what she indicated before. What she indicated before was that the PCR testing is very effective in areas where we are having outbreaks, such as what we're seeing in various parts of the province right now, in Peel, in Ottawa, and in Toronto. We need the testing to make those decisions. We are taking action. We need to take action. We are looking of other methods of testing as well. Some of the antigen testing is looking more promising. It looks as if the Health Canada is going to be approving that. It's a very good screening tool, but we need every tool that we can use at our discretion. PCR testing, antigen testing, we're looking at saliva testing. We need everything that we can do for screening and for testing purposes to keep the people of Ontario safe and healthy. So not only does she lie and say that there's no inconsistencies when the Public Health Agency of Canada is saying it should be 25 cycle threshold, and then she also goes on to say the same circular reasoning that Dr. By, and pulls Dr. Yaff into it, saying, oh, it's accurate when it's in areas where there are outbreaks. Well, how do you know that? More tests, more positive cases. That's the bottom line. We know that the old SARS corona uh, virus is part of this PCR test from Dr. Drustin. So we know that if you've had it in the past, if you've had any past flu or past common cold that had that virus in it, you're going to test positive on this test. More, more tests, more cases, more cases, stricter policies. When what we should be doing is looking at case impacts like hospitalizations and deaths, which are not rising in proportion to cases, Okay, they're not rising in proportion to cases around the world. So what we need to do is really start questioning these PCR tests, start questioning measures that are going on based on these PCR tests because this literally is a case-demic based off of test results that are not reliable.